Hello, I got another live stream for you today and we're going to talk about something very interesting and that's the thing is dun, 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 what to do after you finish your first or your second or your third Ruby tutorial, right? That's a common question. Okay, I just read uh, this tutorial, what do I do now? Uh, I wanted to mention a few things here, a few ideas that you can do for that. About this, first thing, well, a few things you need to we need to understand here. Okay, first, um, first, uh, first thing is just like just finish your tutorial, but there are still a lot of things that you don't understand, right? That's pretty clear but you, you learn a lot of new things but you only remember a little so unless you're some sort of super genius with super memory and everything like <laughs> something like that and you have 20 PhDs <laughs> or whatever you probably only remember about um, to 10 from 10 to 20 percent from 10 to 20 percent right of what you read right so knowing that that's very important because you have to realize that everything in the tutorial if the tutorial is done correctly you are supposed to know everything in the tutorial but if you only remember let's say 20 percent then you only understand you only remember, remember is not the same as understanding, by the way, you only remember 20% of the very basics. So what does that mean? How does it translate into an actual thing you can do? Well, first, this means you need to review. So only because you read one or two or three tutorials doesn't mean it's good, right? But it doesn't mean that you're done with the basics. So you need to review and uh, take notes and put into practice that you learn. Okay, so that will be like my um, advice for that. So in here, a lot of mistakes can be made in this step, very important step of your learning journey. And the major, major step that a lot of people make is either um, look for advanced things, so mistakes at this stage, is to look for advanced things. Oh, I, I don't, I already done this basic tutor tutorial. So that means I understand all of that, but we discovered that's not true, unless you are a super genius. And even then, I don't think you will understand everything. I don't think um, Thomas Edison or Einstein or whoever you consider or Elon Musk, <laughs> whoever you con consider uh, a genius, I don't think even them understand everything in the first fa pass of something, right? So that means the mistake number one here will be to look for advanced things, looking for advanced Oops, looking for advance before before understanding basics, right? So I see some people do make this mistake. Also, another mistake very interesting is that what you call advance, another people calls very basics, right? Because there are many levels to learning something. There are many different levels. So we, we can represent the levels right here. Let me do a, like a visual representation so you understand. Let's say that this is like expert and this is like beginner, All right? For you, if you are here, that's fine because you have to start somewhere, right? Everything that you want to do has to be started someplace. Okay, let's say you're here. 
um, this, all of these for you is advanced, right? This advanced, this advanced. So these are like levels of knowledge and experience and understanding for, of any topic. So this advanced, this advanced, but someone who is in here, someone here, for example, let's say it is like intermediate level. Someone who is here, advanced is this, but all of this is complete basics. But for you, this advanced. So it is important to understand if you are for first, uh, it's a mistake if you haven't understood the basics fully. Second, if you do that anyway, or you're looking for the next thing, you, you already, once you already understand the basics or the level you are at, you, you understand all of it, then you can look for at the next level. What does the next level look like? Well, it looks different depending on where you're at. And that's what I'm trying to understand and uh, to explain here. Because if you ask someone else, oh, what, what's advanced? I'm looking for something advanced. Well, it means you have to be more specific. That's what I mean. So be specific at what you mean. Be specific. Specific. So that means uh, say what topics you mean. What topics do you want to learn about? Do you want to learn about blocks? Do you want to learn about, I don't know, metaprogramming? Do you want to learn about array methods? All of these are different things, right? You need to be clear or what topics you want to learn about. Okay. Also master, master the basics first. Okay, so I hope that's clear. Or master the current level you are at. You are at this level, then you need to master all of these levels before you can become an expert, right? There are a lot of levels of learning. Okay, another mistake is trying to learn a gazillion different things at the same time. I've seen people uh, I work uh, teaching people uh, and seeing people with uh, screenshots and sharing screens that they have lots of tabs open and they're trying to learn 50 different things at the same time. They're trying to learn front-end frameworks, JavaScript, CSS, and this, that, that, another programming language, another thing, another thing, 20 different more things, um, um, databases, SQL, everything at the same time, and that, uh, all of that being in these levels. No, that's a mistake because you're going to confuse yourself. So you want to focus on a few topics. You want to be very clear about this, what you are learning right now. If you are learning about the basics of Ruby, uh, that will be the syntax, the syntax is Okay, how, what's the valid things that I can write in the programming language? Because it's a language, just like uh, English has valid words, right? So this, that's not English, right? Well, that's invalid syntax, we could say. Or if you have your sentence backwards, that will also be invalid syntax, right? Instead of hello, there I say, there, hello, that doesn't make any sense, right? So that's what we mean by syntax, the basics of expressions that are valid in Ruby. And that's where you need to focus on, on beginner level. So that means how, how do you write an array? How do you write a hash, right? And so you want to understand what are these? What is an array? Why is it useful? How is it different from a hash? When would you use a hash, right? So that's another thing, not focusing. So that will be not, the mistake will be not focusing on a few topics, few, right? 
so there is that hello i'm peru thanks for everything yeah you're welcome thanks for watching so that's the kind of mistakes you can do oh another mistake of course is just not being constant so um only learning like once once in a while or once in in a month or something like that so no not being constant so that's another mistake you want to be do uh, you want to commit to a learning schedule right so you're going to say like i'm going to learn one hour every day something like that uh, whatever works for you but you want to be constant and always know when you're going to be learning and of course the last mistake will be um, stopping and and go completely in a different direction if this is something that you want to learn and you're interested then whatever um, difficulties or hard thing that you find well you can get over it you can you can progress you can make progress yes programming is hard but uh, you can learn it it just takes time and some effort okay so that's uh, things that you can do avoid these mistakes and remember that you only learn you only remember a little bit of what you remember uh, to understand things better you can do something that's called like i say explaining a last live stream it's to find the differences explain understand the difference what's the difference between this what's this what are these two things, right? That's the first thing. Second, what's the difference between these two things, right? You, you need to be able to explain that yourself in your own words. Also uh, this, for example, what's, what's this, what's this, what's the difference between those? And what's the difference between those and those? And what's the relationship between this and this? Or what's the relationship between this and this? Right? So that's the different um, ways to, 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 to understand something, right? You can just uh, read a tutorial and say, oh yes, the, and you read, okay, this is an array. Yes, okay, that's an array. But if you don't have an understanding of what it means for something to be an array and what it's what's in function is what's its utility why an array why an array do you know why do we use arrays at all if you don't then you make that into a research project mini what you do is you make mini research projects okay mini research projects for everything you don't understand. Don't expect to be given everything like in a silver platter and go ask every, every little question to, to everyone else. Now, you, it's okay to ask questions, but only when you've done your part of the work. So do a mini research project. That means, okay, I have this question. Why do we use arrays? First, you can think about it um, and try to make some kind of hypothesis out or some kind of idea of what that might be. Then you can search for it. You can uh, go to Google. We have this thing called Google, right? Google.com. And in there you can search. Okay, why do we use arrays in programming? Or why are arrays useful? or things like that so you make you read different um entries not just the first entry and from there you form the idea it's like you are um putting different pieces together 
to make sense of the, the concept, right? Now, when you understand why, that will make a lot more sense of using when you are asked or when you need to use an array, you will know why you're using it, right? Uh, it will also let you compare it with other things. Okay, now you are told in the tutorial, this is a hash. What is a hash? Or why is it useful? The same thing. It's a process you can repeat, but you go, you know what you do in learning, you make connections, right? You make lots of connections, a uh, lot of distinctions. So now you can say, okay, I understand what a hash is. I know what an array is. I know why we use them and what situations they could be useful and how to use them. So there is, this are, these are different things, like, right? What it is, is one thing. Why is it useful is another thing. How to use it is another thing. A, a, a lot of people confuse these things and put everything in one solid, um, like, um, I don't know. One thing that you think this as one thing, but it's many things. It's the function, it's the definition, is how to use it, and how to use it means the syntax, right? What what can you do with it? What kind of operations? That will be methods. So we know, for example, you can get the size of an array, or you can add things into the array. You can remove things from the array, right? So these are operations that you can do with the array. But you can also say, okay, how is the array different from the hash, right? Or how is the array different from a string? Right? So that's kind of the question. Yes, it takes my, more time than just going over the tutorial once and think you're done, yes. It takes more time, but that's what you have to do if you want to really go up, go up this la ladder, 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 whatever, up these levels of understanding, right? Because if you s try to skip them, then you are going to have all kinds of holes. You are going to have a hole there, like a hole there, and uh, holes there, and then, your understanding is going to look, instead of like solid understanding like this, it's going to have all kinds of holes. You see these holes? Your understanding is going to look like this instead of this. So every time that you go one level, it's going to be weaker and weaker and weaker understanding of the levels above, right? And eventually you will come to a point that nothing makes sense if you do this. So that's why you need to spend some time and just understand the things deeply. Okay. And that will eventually take this 20% to 80% plus. Okay, so how do you put things into practice? Well, two things. Thing, thing number one, you want to open this very nice thing that we call IRB or the alternative, which is called PRI. Okay. So what is the useful? This is the most useful tool that you have available as a Ruby developer, either beginner, intermediate, or expert, all of the levels have a use for this great tool that's IRB. What does it do? Well, very simple. You can type Ruby code. Yes, this is Ruby code. Use as this is Ruby code, right? And you can see the, the advantage of this is that you don't have to create a project, you don't have to create any files or save files or even use an editor. You just can type code, see the output, see what happens. 
See what happens when you type that code. That's how you take what you learn and make it in, in take into the practical plane. So, okay, so we cover arrays. Now we can practice with arrays. We can take, okay, this is how I create an empty array. Okay, how would I add items to this array? What happens when I add items to this array? Well, there, 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 ah, oh. let's see what's happening, yeah. I can add items, the same item is added multiple times, okay? So from that you learn that it, it, you can have repeated or duplicate items, right? Okay, that's good. Oh, can I mix items? Yes, I can. I can have integers, have strings. You can even have other arrays in there. And here you practice what you learn, what you know. You practice your arrays, you practice your hashes. These are the basics, the building blocks of every Ruby program. Arrays, hashes, strings, integers. And then from there, you practice um, things like uh, the each method with a block. And this allows you to do basically loops, right? So you can do, oops, I'm looking for the character. Ah. Seriously. And there we go. This allows you to actually print or work with values from this array. So we can do something. There we go. We are printing them. Or we can print them times 10. There we go. Times 10. Right? That is one example. Okay, so once you're done practicing these things, you can bring this into a small project. Small project. Don't try to build an, uh, a gigantic um, project uh, the first time around, okay? Because you're not going to finish it, most likely. Rusia is watching, okay. So yeah, uh, you can practice with these methods and, all, and you can get curious, get curious, ask questions. Okay, we have each. Can we do this in another way? Is there a different way to do this? Um, is there a different method? What happens if I use select instead of each? And we remove these puts. Well, here it doesn't seem that much happens. We get an array back. But let's say that we do a dot even question mark. And now what we get is only the even numbers, right? Why? Because select is like a filtering method. It filters the values, right? So you can play around with these methods and of these basic building blocks and make sure you understand them. And for a project, you can do simple projects. What kind of projects can you make? Well, I will start with something simple, like for example, an inventory uh, application. Only without um, without rails or anything yet. I will do something like an inventory. So like a store inventory application, something like that. Uh, for that, how do you get started? Well, you need um, to understand what it looks like to have an inventory. Okay, let's think about that. An inventory, we have items, some kind of items we're keeping track of. And then we have a quantity of type items. Every What's an item? An item has some name. It might have some um code or id number that uniquely identifies it and the item might also have some other characteristic like color quantity choose the number of how many we have in stock in stock so you can start like this just make 
a plain list you can do it like this or any any way that you want like like this doesn't really matter just to give you an idea of when we talk about inventory what pieces go into that right okay so no what operations what things so this is the data right this data data this or data but what about um behavior what are actions right actions what kind of actions can an inventory do right we can add items can remove items you can query uh, for specific item info right use some ideas um that you can come up with come and these two things are what was going to build our program the data is like the participants who is participating in this um code this could be users this could be books this could be cats whatever products items events anything that you have that's going to participate in the program uh, that you need to keep track of right so items and they have attributes like the quantity name id color so i um, these data items or data things they have attributes but your program also does things so it have actions so they, this is how you can kind of plan your project so you know what you're doing so knowing that now you have to decide how do you represent this data specifically these items how do you represent an item well if we had only one item we could say okay we could say something like item one name uh, equals whatever uh, item two item one id um then but you see the problem with this right uh i um item one um color uh blue uh item one quantity quantity um 100 you see the problem with this and this is why we use things like arrays and hashes because imagine that we have a million items are you going to do this for the million items that have this imagine what mess would that be and finding a specific thing so that's a, a bit of a problem okay we can improve on that uh, we can create what's called a data structure data structure so a data structure is just a fancy name for um a way where we have this data together in one piece together in the same object ruby object okay so what's the ways to do that well we could do this item one equals um, whatever 10 blue 100 okay and i can remove that and we remove that for now too okay but now we have another problem is this what's this what's index zero i don't know 
without actually looking at the data, I don't know what index zero is. And let's say that, uh, okay, we put this into items. Um, we have like a, this, right? Or we can do, hold on, this. But now let's say I add another item. Now I have the risk of having this in the wrong order. So I could do this. I know these are different items. So um, let's say cut. But let's say I mix up these, num these numbers. Uh, in reality, this is the the call the quantity and this is the ID, but you can tell you can tell for the from this. These are just numbers, right? How do you know this number is the D and this number is the quantity? You don't. There is no way to know, and there is no way to know that you got them backwards, that you got them wrong. So this is not an adequate or a good enough data structure for our purpose. Why? Because I explained that there is no indication of what each of the array indexes represent. Each of these slots, you can think of them as slots or positions or spaces, uh, departments, whatever. Each of these indexes, it, it doesn't have a fix um, like description to say, okay, this is for sure the ID. It doesn't have that. So how do we make that? Ah, there's something else very important. And that's the hash. So let's do a hash. Now we can do some magic here. We can say, okay, this is the name. Okay, this is the ID. Okay, this is the color. And finally, this is the quantity. Now we know what is what. Not only that, but we can access by name. Like that or like that. And now we know what we're working with. Okay. But there is an even better way. Do you want to know what it is? Well, this is called a struct. Require struct. You can do the following. We can say, okay, item equals struct new. And now we have a list of attributes, name, ID, color, and quantity. And uh, now we can do the following. We can do this. So magic new. Um, can do this and this and this and this. And we can do this. Okay, hold on. Now we have something different. Uh, you might say, okay, I don't know. Don't we have the same problem? Because they don't have labels. Labels, we don't know which one is which. Well, we do actually, but the labels are on this extract object. They're here. These are the labels. 
And because of that, we can access, as you will see right now, if I go here, we can access by name. There we go. And one of the big advantage of this is we can do use methods like each or map and uh, do this maybe. and we get all everything that's in there. Isn't that nice? And I could add another item like this. I can say, okay, this or cut then um, it's also blue and uh, 200. And now we have two items and we can get their names like this. And this wasn't possible before with our last data structure. Or it was, but it wouldn't look, it wouldn't, it wouldn't look this nice. Okay. So now with this, you have your data figured out, have our data structure. And we can, you can move on into adding the actions. So what are actions? Actions um, methods. When you, you hear actions, sometimes also called behavior, behavior, um, commands. When we're talking about these things, we're really talking about these Ruby methods. When we're talking about data, we're talking about structures. And that can be array, hash, struct, classes. Okay. So you implement your this, which we have done here. And then you do this with methods. So remember methods look like this and methods do things. So we could say add item. And here we do whatever needs to be done. We could say um, remove item. Okay. These are methods. Any questions? We have question from Sony Milk says, hello, Jesus, thanks for your video. Thank you for watching and thanks for your support. Do you have something like stack machines in Ruby? Well, we have um, regular stack in, we have the regular stack in the form of an array when you, the two option, the two things for the stacks, uh, push, which we have, push one, push two, and we have pop. So basically it has a stack. Now, if you mean a state machine, which is different, then yes, we have those state machine. Uh, I have an article on my website, also a video where I cover this. Uh, what you're looking for is you can build your own using something called a state machine pattern that tells you basically how to build a state machine. Or you can use a gem. Uh, one of the gems that I like is called AASM. So it's called A. A S M. You can search for that, Google for that, or look in my channel for that, for stay machines in Ruby, and you will find it. So I hope that helps. And if you mean a stack, the stack that the structure, then this is that, basically. 
hope that helps. Um, by the way, quick reminder, um, if you're new here, my name is Jesus Castillo. I teach Ruby and I have a website called rubyguides.com. Okay, it's called rubyguides.com. And here it is one of the most popular according to some statistics, um, Ruby websites. And you can find here a lot of articles. I wrote all of the articles myself and all of the content. And you will also find my newsletter and my Ruby book, Ruby Deep Dive. So go to rubyguides.com to find that. Okay. Any other questions? I just want to cover so quickly review. We cover about what you do when you finish your first or second or third Ruby tutorial. But what you do is feel realize that you still have a lot to learn. And what you just read, you don't remember unless you're a super genius, super ultra genius, 20 PhDs in, <laughs> in, ten, in before you're 30 or something crazy like that, super ultra genius, you probably only remember about 20%. So what you need is you need to review, you need to ask questions, you need to take notes and you need to dig deeper into the basics and don't just try to jump into more advanced or jump into other topics. So go back to the basics many times, break things down to into smaller, make difference, find the difference, find what's the same, right? Find sameness and difference is called, or another call, another way to call it is um, differentiation and integration. So you you differentiate, that means you find out, okay, we have this thing called an array. We have this thing called a string. Have this thing called uh, an integer. You have this thing called a symbol. Okay, so that's differentiation. non different not making a difference. That means everything is the same, right? If you don't make differences. When you make differences is when you are learning, you are, you are actually understanding what's going on, right? It's like if you are trying to read some text. Yeah, that's a good analogy. Follow, let's see if you follow, you can, if I explain this correctly. Let's say uh, you're reading, you don't know Chinese or Italian or Korean or whatever. You are reading a language that you don't know. Doesn't it look like everything is the same, right? Yeah, all the text is the same because you can pick out the words, individual words, let alone their meaning. So I don't know, I don't know Japanese or another language like that. I know Spanish because I'm Spanish. So let me write something in Spanish. And if you don't know nothing, about the Spanish, some most people know at least a few words. And if you imagine you knew nothing about the Spanish, uh, the whole sentence or the whole text would look like complete garbage, like nothing, like it's the same thing. It's like one block doesn't have any meaning to you because it's the same thing. But what do you do when you're learning a language? You're learning words. What's words? What's a word? It's a differentiation, you're trying to tell apart the difference between one word and another word. So let me write something in Spanish, uh, something simple, okay? Hola, que tal, como estas? Right? Now you might recognize, let's say you don't know anything about the Spanish, not, uh, all, not even basic words like hola. So this means, well, before I translate it, 
you might recognize the question mark. Okay. You might say this some kind of question. And that's about the extent of what you can understand if you know nothing about the Spanish, right? You can understand that maybe this is a question because it has a question mark. And in your own language, question marks are used to, at the end, I used to formulate a question. So that's the extent of your understanding if you don't know what this is. And the rest, it just looks like a block. It might as well be like that. Well, then really matter if it was like that, right? It might as well be like this, if you understand what it says, or even this doesn't matter. But notice we already made a distinction and that's the question mark. You notice the question mark? Uh, you already make a distinction, a classification. You say, okay, this is a question. That's already differentiation, a question from everything else that's not a question, right? Like um, imperative or form or whatever. or exclamation mark. So I'm saying this, oh, and by the way, translation, this says, hello, how are you, basically? Or what's up? <laughs> basically, that's what this means if you, you know. So what's the point of explaining that? Well, uh, because you can make the same differentiation in programming or anything else. So when I give you some code, if you don't know any code, this might as well be one big block of text. Uh, we not mean anything to you, whether it is it like this or well formatted like this, better formatted like this, right? doesn't matter because you, you can't pick out the different components, different words, the different things that are happening in here. So your primary, uh, especially when you're getting started in learning something new, your primary mode of thinking and operation should be to learn to pick out apart the different components, the different words, the different things that are happening here. Okay. And these are, in this case, things like symbols. And you can tell it's a symbol because it has colon in front, uh, strings, and you can tell it's a string because it has the quotation marks, um, integer, race, variable assignment. This case, a constant because it starts with a capital letter, this variable, well, array access through an index. Okay, so you learn the names of things, you learn the definition, then you can you can go deeper. You mean you learn its function, you learn um, how is this related to this, all of these things. Okay, so that's how you learn, and then you start when you are done differentiation, then you can integrate, which means you can combine things together and understand how they work together and who are related to each other, how do you use them together, things like that. Okay? So I hope that helps because that's probably the most powerful learning tip that you will ever, ever had in your life. I'm pretty confident about that. If you apply that, you can apply that to learn deeply any topic that you want, even non-programming topic. You can use that for learning language. You can use that for learning um, anatomy and physiology, if you want, or you can use that to learn, of course, Ruby programming. You can use that to learn anything, okay? So give that a try and let's see how it works for you.
Uh, okay, so there are no questions about what we covered today or anything that you want to know. Then we are about down. Uh, just another, again, another quick reminder if you're new here or maybe not new, but you are not familiar with my website or only these videos where I have this website it's called rubyguides.com and here I have over 150 Ruby tutorials for you to learn right now. And you can apply these learning techniques, okay? And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to click the like button. There is a like button, as you know, in YouTube videos. What that does, it let me know, it lets me know that you appreciate this content. Also, let let's YouTube know that you appreciate the content so it shows it to more people, okay? Also, you may want to subscribe to the channel. And uh, what, what that we do for you is it will enable notifications. It will let me, YouTube will let you know when I publish new videos or go live stream like this. So for that, subscribe to the channel and enable notifications by clicking the notification bell next to the subscribe button, okay? And if you don't want to miss out in on my latest content and updates and everything, make sure to subscribe to the newsletter on rubyguides.com. Oh, and we have a question from Ankit Gupta. Uh, I'm following you for some time. I want to ask. Now, Rails is very much alive. Okay. Uh, the reason is there is active development for Rails. That means we're still getting new features. We're sti still getting uh, bug fixes. We're still getting new development every day. Okay as much or if not more than other frameworks. Um, and yeah, we had not too long ago version six from Rails and eventually we're going to have version seven. So it's keep evolving and progressing. Okay. So the people that tell, that tell you that is somewhat old or whatever, well, they just want to validate the new language choice. They want the new thing to be, to become popular because they're bored or whatever, or they just like chasing new things that uh, trap some people that fall into so chasing new things just for the sake of chasing new things because they, they, they can take the time to master to really take them tight to master one thing. I think you should at least, at least spend five years in one path or one career path or one, at least one framework, one language path, at least five years. If you like it, of course, if you find out early on that you don't like it, then feel free to change. But once you commit to it, go for at least five years uh, with it. Many, time, many people when they go longer, right? Because that allows you to really develop mastery and become an expert. And then that's when you get paid the most. That's when people are going to look for you. That's when you really are at the top of your game in this field or in this particular framework or type of work you're working with. Okay, so if you go to another, uh, somewhere else, like some people are making this mistake because they, they, they can't commit or they they can get, sometimes it's fine to to, to have some boredom, but you, you, you change things up a bit, maybe different project, different company or something, but that doesn't mean you have to jump in another silly language just because is new, right? Also new things, brand new things, they have a number of problems. 
uh, they have less documentation, uh, it's less proven, so it might have more um, bugs, more issues, especially in production. Uh, is it has less support, right? So you want to stay with something that is proven and uh, works and has documentation, it has support. Uh, a lot of big companies use so Rails still used by big companies like Shopify and Twitch. I think they also use Rails. A lot of big companies still use Rails. So it's not it at all. Ruby itself, the programming language is also getting um, updates, book fixes, new features. So there is no reason to be concerned about that. And one more thing, when you become a master of one language, you can bring many of the lessons into another language. Okay? Yes, the specifics change, but the things you learn the problem solving skills that you learn, the many of the data structures, um, basic things like that, all of that translates. So there is no problem with going deep into one thing. Oh, uh, yet another thing, you can freelance. And uh, you can freelance and uh, often you can select, choose the language that you want to work with. So it's not like freelance uh, only for Rails developers or only for this. Many, a lot of work uh, you can choose yourself because you're hired as the expert and you can say, okay, I think Rails is going to be better for this project. Okay, things like that. So I hope that's some ideas for you about that. What level can start looking for a job as a Ruby um, programmer? And um, can you do factory builder partner someday? And so, yeah, I will think about that. Thanks for the suggestion, Ninja Turtle. <laughs> uh, well, your other question, okay, when can you start? So I'm reading questions and comments on another screen. That's why you don't see them here. So the question was, when can you start um, looking for, yeah, your work command and kit? When can you start looking for a job? Well, I think when you can build, when you feel confident that you understand the basics of Ruby. So when you say, okay, yeah, race, yeah, I know that clearly, and you actually can use it and explain it. So if you can explain it to someone else, if there's nothing special for you, you you use it normally without having to think, okay, yeah, this is that. You use, use it when it's needed, something like this, or things like this. For of this, right here is normal for you. Um, and you can build some Rails projects. Uh, yeah. When you feel is is when you you start. Mm, let's see. When you start feeling that that you get it, of course you don't need to know everything because you never know everything. But when you 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 already spent enough time, at least a few months, um, working on it, and you, when you read some code, it makes sense, right? at least most of it. And when you plan a project, it's important. When you're given a project description, you know who to um, plan it out, like I explained in this, in this live stream, and you know how to get started. How Also, another important thing is how to fix errors, okay? You will find a lot of errors. There is a process to fix errors, debugging, right? How to debug, how to research, research, jam, um, research, specifics of how to do things that you might not know. So, rich research skills. 
and problem solving and then Ruby and real syntax um, functional understanding syntax mostly the things I will say that I will look into a junior developer some debugging skills um, some problem solving skills which is very much related to this all of these are related research skills that means uh, how to look things in Google what to look for how to search on different resources uh, that, that might also include searching in books uh, searching in courses searching in articles um, guides everything videos um, debugging how to solve pro uh, fix errors in your code problem solving how to actually plan out a solution to a problem and how to carry it out how to implement it and then of course having a understanding of the syntax how do you actually write a method okay that's how you write a method how you create a class how you create this how you create that they are functional understanding meaning you understand things like okay this is what i can do with arrays and uh, this is how i can find more about what i can do with arrays um functional understanding means you you understand how things work and how to use them right so i think that's uh what i expl can explain about that thanks cool yeah you're welcome anything else that you would like to ask Okay, then I'm about done, or I'm done, in fact, um, if there are no more questions. Thanks a lot for watching, thanks for your support, and remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and visit rubyguides.com. I will see you in the next video.